another big, huge dancehall act that you were involved with, Bojo Bandit. Mm -hmm. right. How and did that happen? How did you guys connect now? So that, um, so there's Sean Paul's DJ. Uh, his name is Copper Sean. Mm -hmm. And he is also a producer, and he produces sometimes with uh, a producer by the name of Young Pow. Mm -hmm. Young Pow is uh, Damien Molly's engineer. So he shouted me a day, he's like, yo, Baby Sham is coming to Toronto. He's doing a show, mm -hmm. and he's a producer, so he's paying out of pocket for it. He said, bro, just help me with some visuals, please. I said, yo, whatever, cool, just let me know. Mm -hmm. And I have a photographer over here that I, I was like, yo, just do some behind the scenes for me. I want to give my boy some good stuff regardless, right? Mm -hmm. Low budget video, we're just going to get it done. 2500 for this video, mm -hmm. running gun kind of stuff. And he said, um, he said, yo, why are you doing this? So in his head, my, the photographer head, you just came off the road with Cardi and Sean. Why are you doing this for 2500 bucks, right? I said, yo, you have no idea, yeah. apart from who Baby Sham is, is what, who might be looking at him or how we might get a, a, a contact, right? I've always gotten links that way. Always, always, always. What it seems like with this entire conversation, what you're saying to me mm -hmm. is network. Network, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's what the whole conversation is yeah. about. Some people look at compensation as monetary value only, and they fail to realize the other picture behind it, you know? Mm -hmm. So not only was I able to, you know, me and my copper Sean have a stronger relationship now because he sees that we're working together, mm -hmm. but also... Um, when I did that for Baby Shem, I remember that day we just linked and we just, and he's, listen, I thought he was going to be an aggressive guy. Yeah. I thought he was going to be demanding. I thought he was going to be like, you know, you know, no, non foolishness. Mm -hmm. Yo, a kind guy, yo. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, don't, what he sings, mm -hmm. he's a whole different being, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But he is also that individual on stage, you know? Uh, but I'm like, yo, you like, he's a sweet, sweet, humble man. Mm -hmm. Um, Anyhow, so he, uh, we do the visuals, and then we're dropping him back to his hotel, and he says, um, he starts playing me other tracks. And he said, yo, I would love for you to shoot these videos for me. I said, you're cool. You're just, I'm here whenever you're ready, right? Um, I go away to Europe, and I remember having dinner, and I see, um, I see Baby Sham calling me. Mm -hmm. And I step outside, and he said, um, yo, my, my brethren, his name is um, Dave Kelly. Is gonna call you. He's gonna call. I, I didn't know who Dave Kelly was. What? Did, did not know who Dave yeah. Kelly was. Did not. He said Dave Kelly's gonna call you. Um, he produced a track, mm -hmm. and he. Um, I told him about you, and he's like, he said you're you're already getting the video, mm -hmm. but just give him a treatment or whatever, right? I said, oh, wicked. I said, I right, cool, got you. So I heard the track, and when I heard the track, I didn't know it was Bougie either. I did not know. It didn't sound like Bougie to me. <laughs> You I know what? Because he had changed at this when he had done the Dave Kelly songs, mm. he had changed his his vibe a bit, especially when it started. So I could understand yeah, yeah. where you kind of wouldn't know that. But yes. also too is that there were nuances in the song when I heard it that sounded like him, mm. but I would not believe it would have been him coming to me. Yeah, because it's not like he's when they're not like you're at your, you just came out of you had your homecoming concert. Yeah, you're fresh. You just put out one song before that. Mm. You're signed to Rock Nation. You have directors from left, right, and center, right? Anybody. But the link came to the Baby Sham based on that video that I did here and I was just vibing that day, genuine vibes, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, he called me and he said, well, this is a Jamaican artist, um, but we have to turn the video around in 72 hours. We have to shoot it there because mm -hmm. of logistical issues. He can't leave. And um, send me back a treatment, right? Mm -hmm. He never told me who it was. Never told me who it was. And then I, um, I said, yo, dope track. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the idea that I have for the video. And he said, they said they want to keep it very simple. Mm -hmm. I said, cool. He said, I'm going to create a group with you and the artist and then kind of just figure out like if he wants to add anything, right? So at this time, he's still not telling you who it is or I, you didn't or no, you never, paying attention. No, I, really, I, I never asked. Mm -hmm. I, um, I just listened to the song, wrote the treatment, and uh, he never told me who it was, right? Mm -hmm. And then he added me to a group. And then I remember um, when he added me to the group, I think I was traveling, so he kept messaging in the group. Mm -hmm. But I was not responding. So uh, I saw a few missed calls and I called back. And then he said, hey, Kiran, we'll go on, da, da, da. And I said, I said, hey, how are you doing? And he said, I'm good. I said, who is this? And he said, it's Mark. And I said, oh, nice to meet you. Yeah. And I said, what role do you play with Bushu? And he said, he started laughing. Because I didn't know his name was Mark. <laughs> I never knew his real name was Mark. His real name is Mark. Yes. And I said, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I said, what? I said, yo, nice to meet you. And I hit. I hit my phone because I really didn't be that hit my face, mm -hmm. FaceTime. Wow. And then he picked it up. I said, oh, shit. 
I said, yo, nice to meet you, man. Mm -hmm. It's an honor. I really appreciate you. You know, he said, yo, thank you for coming down here and da da da. Mm -hmm. And he said, anything you need, let me know. And I said, I appreciate it. And he said, um, he said, uh, uh, do you think it's realistic to turn this around in that time frame? I said, yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. He said, cool. Uh, so when with the seventy two, they wanted it to be shot and edited shot, within seventy two. Yeah, shot and edited within seventy two hours, right? And he said, he said, uh, cool. So he said, um, they'll send in your passport information. Whoever's going to take care of it. When I get there. So I sent in all my info. Um, I landed. Same thing with Tanisha with Cardi. I don't know what Sham or Dave Kelly sold to him, mm -hmm. but they treated me so well. Man gave me this house. Man gave me a driver, security. I was able to bring my wife. Mm -hmm. My the, Oh, the behind the scenes guy, mm -hmm. the photographer from the baby Sham shoot. I called him when I got that call. Mm -hmm. And I said, bro, you remember what you told me? Because he loves Buju too. And he's an Indian guy, right? And I said, I'm going to bring you down to Jamaica to shoot the behind the scenes for me. And he said, since that day, he has changed his personality and his mindset. Yeah. Because he's seen, you know, you can't be closed minded to certain things, right? Mm -hmm. That was like a highlight for me with that specific, because I bring that story up all the time with people. I tell them, I'm like, yo, don't close your door quickly. You never know. So I get down there. The morning we slept, we woke up. I'm in the kitchen. I'm doing like whatever dishes I'm doing. And I see... I see um I see this guy come in. And but I take two looks, right? I'm like, it's a raster guy, so yeah. I thought it was like somebody who, and I take two looks and it's him. Yeah. But he looks big, he's big. He wasn't skinny, he was big. Roll up he had roll up his hair, he's like, Kira, we're gonna he came in the cast like, oh shit. I was like, I didn't know you were gonna because he was not scheduled to be there. Okay. But he just came just to welcome us mm -hmm. personally. And he said, Come, let's go outside and smoke and da da da. We go outside and that's the picture that I eventually posted. Mm -hmm. And everybody was like, What the fuck? You sure you sure that's Buju? Yeah. And I'm there and I'm standing and like, I was so like, I was even telling uh, the, the photographer, I was like, bro, he was like, take pictures. I was like, I don't know if to take pictures, like hold back mm -hmm. because the phone is all about devices and shit. So, <laughs> <laughs> he don't trust devices. So I'm like, let's not crowd the man too early. He now walked in this. Mm -hmm. and, but he, he was like, yo, we we like, could you take some pictures? And when you tell him act, mm -hmm. he acts like he does not get out of character. He got up, he said, let's go by the pool. Let's go here. And he just started and he does this thing, like his thing. And, and you just you feel it. Know when it it's it clicks turned it. on. Yeah, yeah, you know when it's clicked in. Like when he's on stage, he does his thing, and he's just there, and he's and he speaks in his voice. His voice gets deeper, and it's like, and it's the bougie that you love, you love, you love, and your pores just raise, and you're like, yeah. shit. He stayed with us for the entire day and hanged out, and um, he took us to this. Uh, we went to we were doing the shoot. Um, Dave Kelly came, and he, Dave he came and he, he's like, Kira, what's going on? I'm like, oh, nice to meet you. Like, uh, sorry, who are you again? Yeah. And he's like, Dave Kelly, because I've never seen how he looks. No, boss, 99% of the world has no clue what Dave Kelly looks like. None. So, None. So this is this is what I found out because I said, yo, uh, and take a picture of us. And he said, nope. So he took the picture, but he's like this. I'm like, he's like, no, I don't take pictures. I'm like, oh, you don't? I never knew that. Sham was like, he does not take pictures. Mm -hmm. So now we have a really good relationship with everyone, you know, just mm -hmm. because of that project. But once Bougie got involved, the simplicity in the project went up way more. Mm -hmm. He's like, because we were like, do you want dancers in it? Because I don't know if he wants dance in it. He wants to just keep it very, you know. Mm -hmm. He's like, we need girl. We need 10 girl. And then, like, she's like, all right, cool. Mm -hmm. We need 10. Uh, and then this is one of the things that um, I circle back to Sean because uh when somebody gives you a chance, like an artist of, of uh, Sean Paul's caliber, there's nothing you can really do to repay them, mm -hmm. you know, other than show your progress um, and make them proud with your, your growth and so forth. And I was telling him, I said, oh, I'm coming down to do the Buju video. And him and Buju has a very good relationship. I went to see him in prison. They did songs together that wasn't released at that time and, mm -hmm. and so forth. And I said, I would love if you can come and do a cameo in the video. And he was like, and I said, I'm pretty confident Bougie would be cool with that. Mm -hmm. And Bougie didn't invite anyone else, yeah. anyone else. He had two of his brothers, who were also artists there. Mm -hmm. And he said, yo, I love that. And I know for sure that made him so happy, you know, so happy. Because that was a moment for everyone. Everyone in Jamaica would have loved an opportunity for that, right? And the, sad, the bad part about it is that uh, the time that I gave Sean to come, mm -hmm. we have to finish the shoot earlier because we were doing this outdoor scene with smoke. And some of it got in Bougie's throat. Mm -hmm. So we had to stop the shoot earlier because it started fucking him up, messing him up, sorry. Mm -hmm. So he, um, so when Sean got there, he was only to do his part by himself. And he's like, yeah, I'll do it, it doesn't matter. But yeah, that's, that's the story with that.
Yeah. And did you guys do one video or was two videos you guys did? Oh, so we did um, two parts to mm -hmm. it. So when we sent in the first cut in Jamaica, they loved the dancing scenes mm -hmm. and they wanted more of it. So they asked us if we can do a second day, which we did here in Toronto. Okay. And that was uh, when we bought, then that's when I got Tanisha on board. So I had to circle back that way now again. So I said, I remember talking to them, I was like, um, there's like, who can we get to? We would, and they brought up the Give Me The Light videos, those dance trends from back then. How it was so memorable when dancers go in the club, they can mimic it. Mm -hmm. So they wanted something like that for the trust video. Mm -hmm. So I said, well, Tanisha Scott did all that and that's my homegirl. So they said, if you can get her, we're good to go. Mm -hmm. So we got her and we did the shoot over here and we got a bunch of local Jamaican talent from here. Mm -hmm. And they killed it. They killed it. Yeah. It's just always so crazy how the Toronto connection mm. always comes in. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because yeah. with Sean Paul, where he got his big break, that was Director X and Tanisha Scott. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Connected. Okay, cool. Then you came in, you did your part with Sean Paul. You came in, you did your part with Bojo. Cardi B, the Canadian Toronto, especially Toronto connection, is so super crazy. Yep. This podcast is brought to you by www.twolinedmusichunt.com.